Hey everybody, this is Paul. Welcome to Lesson 2 in the Calculus 1 playlist. So in this tutorial I'm going to be doing an introduction to limits. So for this tutorial we're going to be finding the limit of our function f of x here, and f of x is equal to cosine of x divided by x minus pi over 2. And we're going to be finding the limit of this function as x approaches the value pi over 2. So if you notice that if we were to plug in the value pi over 2 into this function right now and try to evaluate it, we would find that we have an error. It would be undefined. Because if we were to plug in pi over 2 here where x is, we would have pi over 2 minus pi over 2, which would give us 0. And then we'd be dividing by 0, which is undefined. So even though we can't actually evaluate f of pi over 2, we can actually find the limit of our function f of x as x approaches the value pi over 2. And the reason why we can do that is we can do that because of this little rule up here. So this says the limit of some function f of x as x approaches some value a, in our case a would be pi over 2, equals or approaches some value l if and only if the limit of that function as x approaches the value from the left is equal to some value l or approaches some value l in some cases and the limit of the function as x approaches that value a from the right hand side is also equal to the same value it was when we approached it from the left hand side. So, <clears throat> so basically if we approach pi over 2 from the left so we're looking at basically f of pi over 2 but I mean we're, we're not really evaluating f of pi over 2 we're kind of approaching and getting close to f of pi over 2 if this is leading to the same value from the left hand side as it is as when we approach it from the right hand side then it turns out that the limit is going to be equal or approach some value l so basically that's why we can find the limit of this function as x approaches pi over 2 so for this tutorial what we're going to do is we're basically just going to kind of pay attention to all the values that lead up to this and then as we kind of watch how this one kind of leads to some value from the left and watch how the values kind of lead to a certain value from the right then we'll conclude what the limit of this function is so later on we'll learn an easier way to do this but for now this is just an introduction so let's go ahead and get started on this method so let's say that we're going to approach it from the left so we've got some x values and then we have a corresponding f of x value and for the first x value we're going to look at the value 1.4 and so then we're going to basically look for f of 1.4 so we're kind of over here somewhere on the left hand side of our function and uh, f of 1.4 I went ahead and already calculated this it's negative 0.9951 one when we carry it out to four decimal places so let's go a little bit closer so let's look at the f of 1.5 so we're at x equals 1.5 and then we're going to plug 1.5 into our function here and we find that the value is of f of 1.5 is negative 0.9992 and if we were to just go a little bit closer to x equals 1.55 and if you notice pi over 2 is equal to 1.570796 so that's kind of why I started with these numbers here we're kind of approaching that this number here so 1.55 is getting really close to pi over 2 from the left hand side here and it turns out carrying that out to um, four decimal places that f of 1.55 is equal to negative point nine 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 so that's approaching it from the left hand side getting pretty close to the value of pi over two so now let's go ahead and approach it from the right hand side so in this case we've got x and our f of x once again and for x we're basically going to start with the value 1.8 so we're kind of over here on the right hand side 1.8 is a little bit bigger than the value of pi over two and it turns out that f of 1.8 is negative 0.9913 when we carry it out to four decimal places. So then if we just kind of go a little bit closer to the value of pi over 2 coming in from the right hand side, then we'll look at the value 1.7 where x equals 1.7. 
f of x happens to be negative 0.9972 when we carry it out to four decimal places. And then going a little bit closer, when x is equal to 1.6, we're just we're getting pretty close to this value now. We're a little bit on the right of it still. We find that we get to negative 0.9999 as we approach it to, from the right. So we're getting both sides, we're getting to this value negative 0.99999 and this is carried out to four decimal places. And basically as we approach closer and closer and closer from the left and the right hand side what we find is the closer we get to f of pi over 2 the closer we get to the value negative 1. So from the left hand side all these values are leading up to negative 1 as we approach this function as we approach it from x, um, it, as we approach pi over 2 from the left and the right hand side of our function here, we find that it is approaching the value negative 1. So basically, this is how you can find the limit um, by just looking at the, how the values change from the left hand side and the right hand side. And if they are approaching the same value, then because of this condition up here, we can say that the limit is equal to whatever value it is that the function approached from the left and the right hand side since they're the same. So anyway in this case the limit of our function cosine of x divided by x minus pi over 2 as x approaches pi over 2 is equal to negative 1. So anyway thanks for watching stay tuned for lesson 3 in the calculus 1 playlist you guys have an excellent day, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.